Hi, I'm Brian Grayson with Wikibon. We're here at the Cube DevOps Enterprise Summit here in San Francisco, and excited to have a uh, guest right now, uh, Paula Thrasher, Application Delivery Lead for CSC. Paula, thanks for being on. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, so you work in the federal government space. Um, you, you've, been, you've been here speaking. Um, you're helping federal government customers transform. Um, the government has a has a, a tendency to want to do big things, you know, big broad things that help them get elected or help get funding. Um, a lot of the DevOps talks are, you know, start small, do a lighthouse. How does that that sort of contradiction work? Uh, how how well does that work? Um, well, I think that is actually a really big challenge in the federal space. Um, I think all organizations sort of have like the IT model that matches their organization, and we get. In the federal government, you get funded to do big things. You get your money is to accomplish things and very big blocks of money and programs are designed to do that. And so convincing an organization that you can do things incrementally is actually very hard. And I think um, the challenge is being able to uh, convince people that you can still do the big thing, but to get to the big thing, you're gonna take a lot of small steps to get there. Yeah. Um, and I think when you can do that and say, it's okay that we're gonna do a few things incrementally, and then at the end, we'll get to the big thing. Um, if you can accomplish that from a motivational standpoint, you can still do the thing that was intended. And, and actually with better outcomes, because um, you know we have systems that we report to congressmen on how it's going. <laughs> and being able to say, I'm not giving you a report, I want to actually give you a demo. Um, I, the leadership really likes that, because that makes them look good. It's not fictional. They can actually see how we're spending their taxpayer dollars. And so there's, there's ways to do it, uh, but it's definitely a cultural challenge. I think it's one of the largest ones we have. Right. I, you know, it, it's, it's cliche, but a lot of people want to say, well, you know, Washington is, is bureaucracy and it moves slow and so forth. How do you how do you get across this idea of, of being agile? It's you know they're not for profit companies, so sometimes you know we heard a lot of people this week talking about you know we're, we're driving profitability. What, what sort of metrics and terms do you talk about to the agencies to get them to go? Okay, that that applies to me. That motivates me. Yeah, I think you know the funny thing is early in my career um, I was doing a lot of agile, but I wouldn't call it agile because that was not an accepted thing to do. So I would just be like, we just have a methodology that goes really fast. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to go slow, that sounds great. Um, but as we've actually talked Agile, for us it's a lot about the mission. And um, I especially found a real audience in the, um, in the military domain, but it was true in, in the civilian side as well, in that being able to respond very quickly to mission needs um, is very motivating. More so a lot of times in profit, because I mean, profit is somebody else's money. Um, and a mission, a lot of these people, you know, they've been the one um, whose lives are on the line. And, and I think it's actually a really cool opportunity when you work for the federal government because you can literally work on systems that save lives. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot of other people that do jobs where you get to say that. Um, so I think that's one of the things I like the most about the kinds of things we do is that we do actually do missions that really matter. Yeah, one of the things that I know Gene talked about, uh, you know, some of the, the speakers, uh, you know, Target was talking, and, and one of the one of the women speakers had just gotten promoted. Gene talked about some other people. How do they how do they deal with sort of the rock star and visibility that that goes along with with doing things different and fast? How does that work in the federal space where maybe that hasn't been the culture so much? Uh, you know, I think the interesting thing is that uh, the federal space doesn't. Uh, I think you can actually be really successful without being a rock star. Um, I do think there's a lot of people that do um, public speaking in that space, a lot of the leadership, uh, and they see it as a way to motivate their own uh, you know, employees and, and the contractors, I think, to, um, to do great things. I mean, I think it's an interesting challenge because it's not an industry that um, rewards sort of public accolades, but, but at the same time it does. I mean, I think all industries sort of reward people who share a good story about something they did that was successful and that encourages somebody else to do that same thing. So I think a lot of it is more about evangelizing um, and it's a really nice community in the federal government. I think people really share a common purpose and they're really willing to tell, you know, which a lot of times companies won't want to do. They don't want to tell you this is my proprietary thing and I don't want to tell you how I did it. But in the federal government, they're really open to actually sharing. This is what I learned and this is what worked and this is what didn't. And, and actually, it's kind of a nice community. Yeah. So, you know, th this week is a lot of community, um, you know, lots of sharing, lots of, um, you know, Washington, D.C., that whole area is, is as dense in terms of companies and technology as, as here out in the Silicon Valley area. Yeah. How well does the sharing sort of community piece work there? Do, do you see a lot of sharing? I mean, I know there's there's obviously in some cases you talked about military where there's restrictions that are you know legal restrictions, but but in general, 
is it a sharing culture? Do you see people moving between agencies, or, or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of actually. I mean, it is really a community of people that work in the federal government, and and there is a lot of um, people changing uh, agencies and come not as much maybe. I mean, I don't know how that compares actually to commercial, um, but I do feel like there's a really good community there and a good technology community, um, and and it, there is a lot of sharing. Although it's it's definitely challenging because um, I think sometimes the political environment makes it a lot harder for us to sort of geek out yeah. <laughs> that's a thing um, that a lot of it is more mission oriented when you actually want to talk about something under the hood about technology they go whoa that could be a security problem i don't know about that so um, i think we want to share um, but sometimes the politics of it make it a little bit harder for us to share than, than maybe it should okay. we've heard a lot of stories this week where um, you know some some groups within the organization will sort of start out it gets grassroots they'll, they'll They'll, they'll get some successes, some lighthouses, and then they go find uh, executive support. They'll find leadership support. Do you find the same thing happens in the federal space just because of the way they're, they're budgeted? Or is it, you know, is, is there, are there patterns in terms of how they go from, you know, old ways of doing things to starting new ways to, to doing all the new, new things? Yeah, I mean, I think the story of transformation in the federal government is the story in any large enterprise, right? It's, it comes both directions. Sometimes it comes because it's top down, right? There is a new leader and they say, look, this is going to happen, right? Um, it's not very effective in the federal government, I, I think, because um, the leadership is more transient than the employees. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of a short timer sort of role sometimes. Uh, so top down doesn't work very well. Uh, and, and the employees can't be fired as easily as they can in the public sector. So that's a hard way to do it. So I think most of the transformation has been very grassroots. Um, and I think actually there's been people doing this in the federal government for a lot longer than people realize. Um, it's just that we're finally starting to get to a critical mass where we're actually doing things that are, you know, really, really making a difference. Um, uh, I mean, you know, we see all the way up to the president. I mean, Obama at one point, you know, he's got a he's got a CIO. He's bringing in people from Silicon Valley. How much of that is is trickling down to the work that you do? I mean, is it is it making a lot of changes, or is it just bringing awareness that we need, you know, science and technology to be more forefront? How much is the culture or the maybe the, the temperature around Washington, D.C., and, and how much we want to be innovative changing uh, in your yeah. space. Yeah, I mean, actually, so this is a little bit what I'm going to talk about. Um, I think there's nothing better to get a conversation going like a crisis. Yeah. And in a weird, weird way, I think healthcare.gov was the crisis we needed to have DevOps in the federal government. Um, I think without that, it was a side project that there were a lot of people very interested in doing, and there were a lot of companies that were interested in doing it, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't the compelling call to action. And that made people realize that like we can't we can't do things the way we used to, and we really do actually have to take this seriously. This is this is not just a side project. So, if there is a positive outcome of that, I think is that it actually has uh, I think changed the conversation. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to actually seeing that go somewhere. So. Good, good. Um, so, one of the things that I know from your bio, you've done some work with the the AWS GovCloud. You've you've helped some some agencies transfer some applications. You know that that in and of itself, working with the public cloud is is its own trans, you know, its yeah. own change, oh, its sure. own culture, yeah, and then you've got the like. How do, how are those two things intertwined in terms of agile and and in the public cloud, or or how are you helping customers feel comfortable doing dealing with that? Yeah, I mean, there's twofold. There's, there's a technology revolution and there's a culture revolution, and um, the technology pieces uh, I think are really um, the Amazon. I, I, they've got a great solution. And I've certainly helped in that regard. Uh, we're CSC, we're uh, partners with Amazon, and we've done some good work with them. And I think the most interesting piece is it actually changes both, because it's both a technology change, obviously you're using a new platform to deploy your software and all that stuff, but it's a cultural change too, the idea that, um, that infrastructure is code, the idea that you're just gonna automate, I mean, both deployments that we've done to Amazon fully automate everything from dev to production, and that's uh, like a, culture change in terms of thinking, like maybe I don't, not quite know ops, but um, a different way of thinking about how we do ops. And that cultural piece um, is actually harder. And like a funny story is that um, I was actually internally, we were doing some stuff with cloud and, and I was talking to somebody, I said, look, this other team over here, they really want to test your, your thing. Can they, can you spin up an instance for them? And, and the project manager instantly said, well, that'll be two weeks. And while he was saying that to me, his lead engineer in the background was like, I got it, who am I giving access to? Who do I send the IP addresses to? And it's like the mentality that this takes two weeks is harder to fix than the actual technology of it. The technology piece was easy the mind shift of now we can actually go faster. That, that's, that's the hard part. And I think that's probably true. I mean, it's true for us in the government, but I'm sure that's actually true in a lot of 
a lot yeah. of organizations. No, that, and, that, and that's exciting. I mean, it, it gives people hope. When they're seeing the government doing things faster, they're doing things more nimble, it gives people hope. Um, for Paul, with that, thank you very much. Um, it's, it's great to see so many different industries, so many different segments of, of not only here in the States, but, but around the world, you know, making this shift, going faster, taking advantage of new technology. Uh, we're going to wrap up with that here at DevOps Enterprise Summit here in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.